Greetings, Earthlings. This is Alan Boyle, Aerospace and Science Editor for GeekWire. We're here at an East Lake uh, lab for University of Washington where the UW Hyperloop team has just taken the lid off their Hyperloop pod, which they'll be competing with in Los Angeles next weekend. So the director of the project, David Coven, told us how this thing is put together. How much does the, pot, the shell weigh? So the shell weighs about 25 pounds. Uh, it's about six and a half plies uh, of unidirectional twill. Uh, we did a hand la layup that lasted a few days where we laid the carbon fiber down on one of our molds. Uh, we sanded it, we primed it, we painted it, and then we put this nice, wonderful vinyl to thank all of our sponsors for all of their hard work. Uh, it's about 12 feet long, 22 pounds. It could stand about 250 to 500 newtons of force before before it starts to crack in any noticeable manner. Um, what do you think is more beautiful, the inside or the outside? Ooh, I, I'm a little biased because I like to paint. Um, I think the inside is more beautiful, but you all can be the judge. Um, and I guess on three, we'll, we'll raise the shell. Uh, one, two, three. Wow. Woo! There's the beast. And so from front to back, we have part of our attachment mechanisms, we have our lateral stability modules, we have our PEDs, which act as levitation sources. These crossbars you see allow us to attach the copper and composite fairing to our actual chassis. Uh, black and red is one of the most traditional colors whenever you're trying to build something mean and clean. Uh, we have the very, very bright, vibrant red for our rotors, uh, the things on the bottom, the red disc. We have the motors that have the red trim on them. Those allow us our propulsion mechanisms. We have these boxes over here, one with the top on, one with the top off. Those are our battery systems that allow us to power these hugely, hugely consuming motors and all of our other electrical systems on the pod. Mm -hmm. uh, so and then, and once it gets going, the magnets are going to lift it right up yep. the over the rail. Yep. So once it gets going, you have these sections of wheels where you have two wheels on each side. You get going about 20 miles per hour, and you start to levitate about a quarter inch off the track. This Hyperloop competition is sponsored by SpaceX, which was founded by Elon Musk, who came up with the Hyperloop idea. And so the UOW Hyperloop team and other teams from around the country are going to be going down to Los Angeles next weekend to compete in the pod races. So we talked with Professor James Seferis who led this merry band of students as they put together this forward-thinking piece of technology. You were saying that the environment uh, for innovation is as important as the technology itself Absolutely. and this is an example is of an example. how that works. That's exactly the point and we're like a halfway house that you know they finish their studies formally and this is what I think is unique about this team. You heard some of them already have graduated and some of them are still in school. So that blend really provides a stretch on the teaming and the technology. Mm -hmm. So it can go in places that we never thought of before because what usually happens, people graduate and they go to work or they start a company. This is a, that's why I call it halfway house. Mm -hmm. You have large companies that are interested and maybe they will do their own or you know spend some time here and go to a small company. And I've heard that you already have have some pretty wild and crazy ideas for people to follow up on. What, well, what's coming up? Well, part of the things I want to bring them is challenging on things that exist out there. But, you know, that's what I do for a living. I travel the world three or four times a year to look at opportunities like this and maybe bring them here and expose them. And if they like it, they can actually expand on what they've done.